Welcome to State of Consciousness Podcast with your hosts Gabriela Fernandez and Ryu, along with various other community collaborators who will take you on a journey to explore through their individual offerings and services how they are contributing to the greater shift on the planet. If you are interested in how you can both experience and become a part of this energy, sit back and give a listen as we are all one. Welcome back to the State of Consciousness podcast. This is episode four with Anumani Santos, or as you will hear later in this episode, she is also going by her new name, Elohi Magdalena Rosa. She is an intuitive healer, channel, and voice alchemist, and is a sought-after spiritual teacher and transformational leader who channels powerful activations, delivers talks and workshops that empower heart-centered leaders, entrepreneurs, change makers, creatives, healers, and messengers to unleash their soul's genius and show up in the world as their most brilliant and authentic self. Anumani is a bridge to the soul and vessel for many ascended beings and deities, angelic, galactic, and earthly, that channel healing sounds, light language, and activations that work on the cellular level to bring forth healing, awakening, and evolution. She is also a high priestess of Isis, the Magdalene Rose lineage, and an activator of the Christ consciousness and the sacred mysteries of the divine heart. Anumani is the international best-selling author of Unmasking Your Soul, A Transformational Journey of Truth, Light, and Healing, and a contributing author to EIPPY award-winning book, Pebbles in the Pond, Wave 4. She is the forthcoming author of Unmasking Your Soul, Activating the Sacred Mysteries of the Divine Heart. She is also the creator of the Wisdom of the Soul Oracle and a variety of energy and light-encoded soul art. We are really excited for you to listen to this conversation. So without further ado, we will welcome in Anumani. All right. So welcome back to the State of Consciousness podcast. We are here today with Anumani Santos, and we are so excited to get to know a little bit more about you and all the work that you're doing. So if we can just jump right in, can you share a little bit about yourself and the work you're doing and how you got started? Sure. Um, so it's, I was thinking back and it's been 20 years since my dream of awakening. So I think I need to give a little bit of context because I um, was asleep for a long time. And I do remember that as a little girl, I was probably three or four, the angels would uh, pull me out of my body and I would be astral traveling. And I just remember flying over like my home and the trees and I was giggling and twirling and flying with the angels and then they would put me back into my body. And it was around that age where, um, life started to happen and it's like i um i think i rejected the spiritual part of me around the age of four um, i was sexually abused and probably around seven or eight i was still having like out of body experiences but i remember a, a cousin saying to me you're crazy and that immediately uh, caused the part of me that was already afraid of being in this body to go like, oops, I can't open up to this. So I would say probably around 10, I started to really pull back from that. Even though I think there was always a part of me that knew that there was something more, there was, you know, um, a God, uh, I call it God, goddess now, source. But back then, um, I was still very much into that connection through prayer. But that was it. It's like I didn't have anybody around me to support me. I felt very misunderstood by my own family. Um, I felt 
like I had been abandoned here on this planet and a bit rejected, uh, very judged and criticized, who spent most of my life, you know, trying to find myself again. And so, you know, fast forward to going to college, I ended up becoming an electrical engineer, not because that was something that, you know, I had always thought about. I actually was struggling to figure out, you know, what to do in college. And my brother, my older brother and his friend were speaking to me and they said, oh, you're good in math and science. Why don't you become an engineer? So I did. And um, I lasted a couple of years in that and then um, got my MBA and went into consulting and have worked in corporate for a long time. And in fact, I'm still, I still have a foot in, in corporate, uh, although I'm being pulled to, to do this spiritual work full time. And there was all these things that happened to take me to that dark night of the soul which really happened in 2003. So that was 20 years ago. I was in a very unhealthy marriage and I kept getting signs. My body um, just started to shut down. I was having fainting spells. In fact, at, I was in a corporate job at the time and I remember several times walking into the building and almost fainting and and people noticing and they said, you know, what what's wrong? And I, I said, you know, I don't know, but I'm having these fainting spells. And it was just a sign of my body trying to awaken me. And in 2003, I was still in that in that um, it was actually a nonprofit organization. And I remember the dream like it was yesterday, it was October of 2003. And in the dream, I was in, in, in an elevator. And I used to work in New York City, and I think spirit always uses symbols that, you know, we can understand. And the, there were three other women in the elevator. And it actually took years for me to figure out who those women were. Um, I didn't really know who they were at the time. The cable breaks loose, you know, like in the movies. It makes a hole through the building and starts skidding over this muddy, muddy water, which really was where I was. I was really in this dark place, very depressed. I mean, everything um, seemed to be going wrong. My marriage was going wrong. Um, people thought that I was happy in my career was not happy in my career. My body was giving me all these signs. And I ended up um, actually losing the, uh, I was a consultant at the time and ended up losing the job at the time when all this was going on. So it was like a triple whammy. And in the dream, I, I hear, I saw an angel on the bank of the river and she pulled me out of the elevator and then I, I lost my wedding ring, which was a sign of what was coming. And then I heard a voice and the voice said, my child, I have a mission for you. You're not going to understand what it is, but be patient because in time it will all be revealed. And didn't know what that meant, but immediately when I woke up, because it was so lucid, I knew the first thing I needed to do was leave that unhealthy marriage. And that was the turning point for me. Um, when I think about, you know, all of that and all the signs, there was so much resistance within me because there was so much fear around really allowing the spiritual part of me to be seen because I had had many lifetimes where I had been tortured and et cetera. Um, so that part of me was terrified. And in fact, you know, my ego um, uses very strong words. It has this fear of being annihilated. That's the word it uses. And I've come to, uh, you know, a different place since then, but 
boy, that dream gave me the courage. It's like slam, my crown opened up and gave me the courage to step forward. So the first thing I did was leave that unhealthy marriage and then spent, you know, I started meeting people and this is what happens, right? When you, when you surrender, when you start to surrender and you have the willingness to listen and to start taking the actions that bring you closer to coming home to more of who you really are. And I didn't really know what that was yet, but started meeting people and I um, was in a meditation class a friend had recommended with this guy who had been an accountant and he was an energy healer now. And that's when I started to learn about energy. And then all of a sudden, um, my journey has been very mystical. I started to have these mystical experiences in my meditations. I would be taken to temples of light and the, the first set of uh, guides were Egyptian. And I have a very strong uh, tie to Egypt and Isis and I'll get to that in a moment. And they would put my hands like on old manuscripts and um, take me to temples and libraries. And as they would place my hands on these very old manuscripts, papyra, uh, they would activate uh, energies within me. And that's when I started being guided to do hands on healing. And so I would, you know, put people on the table and my inner sight started to open up and I would get visions as I placed my hands like on the energy centers. And, you know, took some some courses, but my journey has been very divinely guided. It, um, it felt like I was always being put in a box and my soul really wanted to break out of that. And that pattern repeated in my family life, in my marriage, in my career. And I have to say that, you know, I finally feel my word for this year is embodiment as I move through all those challenges, you know, I had a near death experience in 2013, 2014 was when I got my spiritual name, Anumani, which means the omniscient jewel of compassion and love. And last year I got a new name, which is on the screen here, Elohi Magdalena Rosa. So it's taken this long for me to get to this place where I can really be the channel that source was wanting me to be. And so when I got my name in Anumani in 2014, that's when I was actually in the process of writing my, my first book, Unmasking Your Soul. And that's really the process I've been through. I think for all of us, you know, we come to teach what we ourselves have to remember and learn. And so for me, it was taking all the masks that I had been wearing for most of my life because there was this steep wound around love and believing that I needed to search for love outside of me and really learning to come back home into my heart which is the portal, right, to source, to soul, to all that we are, to our truth. And so through all the challenges, you know, illnesses and gosh, all these things that happened, I started to realize, um, I also started to paint and I started doing art. Again, didn't understand all these things that I was doing, because it's like we get these puzzle pieces, right? And then later on, they start to make sense. But now I'm very clear, really, that my purpose is as an intuitive healer. Um, and I'm going to put channel in the center and voice alchemist. So really, as the channel, I am transmitting 
in anything I do. And really I found there's three pillars to my work. It's the sound alchemy that I do through my voice, the writing and the art. But it took me, right, a long time to get to this place where I could get out of the way so all the beings that wanted to channel through me could come through. In 2014, a collective consciousness, they call themselves Ishtar. They are, uh, I like to call them the conductor of the symphony that comes through my voice. They are a collective consciousness of 227 Syrian souls. Sirius is one of my origins and that was really scary for me, but it opened the doorway for more beings to speak, for me to be able to bring through light language. And now it's like there's just this beautiful, um, it's hard to put in words, but as I'm experiencing it in my body, it's like this weaving that happens through me and through my voice where my guides are using my vessel to open portals and gateways and there's sounds there's spontaneous song there's spoken word there is light language and many many beings and usually Ish ishtar kicks they kick off the the sound alchemy but then it's, you know, sometimes it's shamanic where medicine men and women come through. Um, I've been channeling the whales a lot. I'm very connected to Isis, uh, Mary Magdalene, Yeshua, and uh, um, many galactics and earthly spirits. And last year, I have to say I had a miracle healing. 2022 was a big year for me. It really took me, I think, to uh, a new level that my guides were wanting me to get to. And, you know, I had been channeling since 2014, but I had never experienced like a being, a deity in my body. And it happened in 2022. It was so unexpected. I was actually doing a, like a mind, body, spirit, little expo in Annapolis, Maryland. And I really wasn't feeling well that day. I had a really bad migraine. And I have a group of friends there and a community that I work with a lot in Maryland. And they invited me out to dinner after the expo and it was at a friend's house where um, they said, oh, let's go to the living room and let's pick some Oracle cards. And they, they happened to have an Egyptian deck. And I had picked uh, a, a card and it was Isis, but I had put it back and we were all taking a break, so they hadn't seen. So we all sat in the living room and my friend who was hosting us said, oh, let's bring the Egyptian deck over. And I said, you know, I'm really not feeling well. And she's a healer herself. And she started um, asking me questions. I had my eyes closed. She says, you know, let's pick a couple of Oracle cards for you to see what, what comes out. And she ended up picking Isis. And as, you know, they were reading like the meaning of the card and she starts asking me like, so what are you seeing or what are you feeling inside of you? And I had my eyes closed. I had a terrible migraine and I immediately saw this golden disc in my heart center and it had the eye of Horus imprinted on it. And then all of a sudden this golden pillar just opened up straight up above my head. And I immediately saw an orb hovering over my head. And my friend goes, oh my God, Isis is here. And she immediately came into my body. And I don't remember everything because I was in a trance for a couple of hours. But there was deep, deep grief. Like I knew that 
I was releasing not just for me, but for the collective. There was all this grief coming through me many, many, many lifetimes. And at one point I was like on the ground on my hands and knees and I could feel for all my life, I had an energetic split between my upper and lower body and had really, really bad back pain and um, had been to doctors and, you know, had even tried to see if they could do any procedures or anything. And right before this happened, um, I pretty much gave up on that because nothing they were recommending seemed to be working. And I was like, okay, this isn't going to be a physical thing. This needs to be energetic. And it's, I could feel, it's like she was sewing me up from the inside. And there was just this um, higher part of me, this priestess part of me that had been wanting to come in, that finally was able to come in with, with her help. And then I started remembering uh, I always knew that I was connected to Isis, but I started to remember, oh, you know, I was one of your high priestesses and I've also been a high priest and, you know, I was at the temple of Dendor and I started to have visions. Uh, it's like I was being dropped back into the temple to see things that had happened and to start to remember more of what I had done there. And so the next day my friend I hadn't told her about feeling like I was being sewn up and she had a vision of like a rag doll being sewn and it was validation for me like oh wow yeah this this really happened and that accelerated my my path and just changed everything for me she's been um coming in consistently and the amazing thing is you know she comes into my body and yet I can still walk around. Um, it's pretty amazing how, you know, when you think about who we really are, because we all have gifts, we all came from source, we are all emanations of God, goddess. And we have such amazing powers that have been forgotten. And so, you know, when I think about why am I really here, it is to help humanity with the ascension process. And specifically, you know, my work is to help people embody who they really are, help them remember. And I do it, you know, mainly through my voice, through the sound alchemy. And and then I have, you know, my art and my writing helps to support that. So all of these transmissions that come through. And I remember, I think it was back in, I don't know, maybe 2010, where I had a vision um, where I saw myself hovering over the earth and it said ascension. And I knew that, okay, so my purpose is to help with ascension, but didn't quite know right so now it's become very clear that my work really is to as i embody right who i am and really using the power of the voice um, especially for women right bringing the the power of the sacred feminine and i think that that's what isis and and you know that's when i got my new name Elohi Magdalena Rosa. I've always felt connected to Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, to the Christ consciousness. It is part of the energy I'm here to help awaken and connect to. And it's within all of us. And they, again, I was taken to this other dimension. The only way I can explain it is I felt I was in the sacred throne within our hearts and I was witnessing the emanation of source 
And what I was told was, you know, source can take any form. And, you know, these deities, these goddesses, all these, they're all just different faces of God goddess because of the, they carry different vibrations and frequencies, different qualities. And there's many different pathways, right, to, to find and to come back home. And so these, these ascended beings come to help us remember the times when we've walked upon this earth before in ancient civilizations so that we can use the gifts that we've already done before to reawaken that which was seated within us and embrace more of that love. So ultimately I came to realize that, you know, love was everything. And the phrase that I use all the time is love is the alchemy. It is the healer, the guide, the teacher. It is the way. And that is the way of Mary Magdalene. And so last year, when all this new remembrance and insight was coming forth, they said, um, you need to take on this new name. I'm kind of in between worlds. I'm using both names right now. But at some point, I'm going to be using just the, the new name. And began to remember my connection to the Elohim angels and really that ultimately that frequency and vibration of the angelics the galactics you know the earthly it's like we are weaving all those parts of us back into this vessel that we occupy and for me now um, you know the anumani was the galactic uh, Eileen, which was my birth name, holds some of the earthly. And they said, we're now bringing in the angelic part because you're helping humanity also embrace their wings, embrace who they are, embrace all these ancient parts of themselves and embrace the love, which really is the key Right, the love is the key to the unfolding, to the coming home, to the remembering. And and this year, all that stuff that happened last year really launched me into just this deeper place of embodiment, of of getting out of the way, so that the beings that need to express through my vessel, through my voice. They can come in as pure as, you know, I can hold them. And I've come to this different place of being where my work has become so joyful. And that is, I think, validation of the level of embodiment that, you know, I am now. And not that, you know, I still have an ego, but the awareness is so much more that now it's much easier for me to go to that place and just bring love and also leverage these connections with my guides where, you know, Isis will pop into my body. And, you know, the other day she came in because there was a part of me that was you know, it was like this other layer of um, afraid of being seen. And she just held her and started singing. And that's when I realized, like, you know, this is really the way, my way of being in the world. It's through the voice. And this is coming from a person who was like so afraid <laughs> to speak up afraid to speak in public like who would have thought right that this was my purpose was to use my voice and yet it makes so much sense that typically your greatest fear is your greatest gift and i've come to this you know full circle of recognizing like yes 
this is what I'm here to do and started, you know, uh, back in 2022, I started doing destination retreats, was, which was on my bucket list and just met this amazing soul sister who also has similar lineage. And we both had visions that we were supposed to work together and start doing these retreats in different places. So we actually did a retreat in Canada last year. We just did one in Sedona. We're doing one in Costa Rica next year. I mean, this is a dream come true for me. And and I just did a, it was called Elevating Your Consciousness Through Sound Alchemy event in Annapolis this weekend. And again, it was just validation that I need to do this work and that um, I certainly want to do it online because I can reach more people, but I'm really loving the in-person again, mm -hmm. just being in the presence of the people and feeling that group energy in person, you certainly feel it online, but it's just to me, being able to witness the people in the room and Isis did um, eye to eye. This is like a new thing that I've been doing an eye to eye light activation. It was just amazing. And Isis is very sensual and she's very powerful. And if I were to say the two words of, you know, three words, I'm gonna say that she has really helped me embody love because she loves humanity so much and it's the reason why she you know finds vessels to channel through but so empowering when she's in my body i feel unstoppable and and then she's very sensual so part of my work eventually will be around sacred sexuality and i've been shown um, visions of when I was a high priestess and the teachings with the initiates in the temples around sacred sexuality. And, you know, that's been spoken of, of in the Magdalene manuscript by Tom Kenyon and, you know, others have spoken about it. And I am really starting to feel the energy around all that, the sacred feminine and the Kundalini and, and how that energy that comes you know from the earth and then is joined by that cosmic energy really helps to anchor us in our bodies in such a powerful way and now i get to do that right for others who resonate with you know the sound alchemy which really is my it is my favorite thing to do to do these transmissions because they're always different. I never know who's going to show up. Sometimes they'll say, okay, today, you know, there'll be a focus and a theme on this, but it's always just, you know, getting out of the way and allowing them to work through me. And it just brings me such joy, joy for myself, because boy, I've been through the ringer just like, many of us have been and i feel so joyful to be at this place where now i have more tools and a deeper embodiment to be able to handle the ego in a different way and really love it up yeshua was the one who in mary magdalene who said to me that we were here to love each other back into being and I really love that and I really take it to heart and that is what I bring to the folks that I work with and I'm looking forward to you know to doing more of this work to doing more events you know finding venues to to do this type of work do more retreats you know be more online so perfect timing for this because my one of my goals was to be more visible in, online. 
So I just love the way our souls are co-creating and just this divine orchestration that you know, you know, you can't make this up. It just is when you look back and I like to think of it as puzzle pieces, how all these pieces come together. In my book, I, I call it the canvas of your soul. And that's really my specialty is really working with the soul and the higher self of the people I work with so that they can reconnect to that higher part of themselves and really deepen into their own awareness. And the sound alchemy is just the, the modality that I use to kind of melt away what's in the way for them to go deeper and deeper and deeper and then higher, right? Because it's the ascension is really the more, I, I think of the soul descending into the body, more of your soul's light as you, as you clear the space within the vessel and then that sacred union happening between soul and ego. And Yeshua calls it uh, raising your ego to higher ground, which I really love as well. So, yeah, just so excited about bringing more work and seeing what else spirit has for me. So, Gabby, are you going to let me ask her now? I have notes all over my paper. <laughs> this is just this is like beautiful. You could have just gone on and on and on and on. Um, but there's there's this one word that you... Uh, mentioned quite a bit was this whole aspect of embodiment, right? That that that's yes. the that's the word of the year, right? Yes. And um, you know, can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit more and how that is relating to you know all this ascension that's going on? I mean, your 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 journey up to this point and now in this new wave of expansion, again, new multidimensionality, this connection, the heaven, the earth connection, angelic forms coming in the cosmic. Um, you and I are star sisters, so we have these various similarities in our journey. <laughs> so I'm sitting here the whole time going, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but, um, it's 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 not by happenstance that this is happening at this time, is it? No. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything has accelerated, right? Yeah. And I like to think of them as uh, soul choice points mm -hmm. um, because you still have to choose to yes. awaken. Mm -hmm. You're given the opportunity, right? I could have said no back then mm -hmm. in 2003. But I said, hell yes, mm -hmm. because there was just something, there was like this fire inside of me. It's uh, one of my paintings, it's called The Spiritual Warrior. That's exactly how I felt. This courage, this strength, like I knew I was here to help humanity. So for me, embodiment is, is being more of who you are. Mm -hmm. We come with all these many layers and you know some complexity of especially because our human mind can only understand so much yeah right more than your divine mind the soul aspects of you and we have many different soul aspects so we're given the how much we can really absorb in a moment and so that's why there's divine timing to things because if they gave it to you all at once your your physical body wouldn't be able to process it we need time in the physical body to be able to process and integrate things so when i talk about embodiment i kind of see it as these layers that you know some would say are layers of illusion I like to honor the experience that the ego has had, right? We have core wounds and core patterns. And many of us, you know, when we get to this stage, we start to understand like, oh yeah, that's a core pattern that I've been holding. 
Um, and there's been several for me um, that I've had to really work through. The definitely the the fear of being seen is one. You know, I had a strong fear around the voice and you know um, being put in a box all the time and being controlled and and so I've had to work through those layers and and for me uh, I'm going to say divine devotion it's one of the qualities that I speak about in my book one of the soul chambers of light it really has made the difference for me of of knowing that I need to spend time with spirit. And many times I have to get help from others because sometimes, you know, you can't see, um, we have blind spots. And, and so I'm always listening, right? Is, you know, if I need extra help, I'm gonna get it. I'm very big with self-care, so I have, I have my pit crew, um, my acupuncturist, she says she's part of my pit crew. Um, who are, you know, like working and helping my body assimilate, you know, all the, 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 um, the intensity of the light that is coming through at this time. Mm. I don't know about you, but since the eclipse, I was really feeling it. Oh, yeah. And I had to get extra help. I had to get extra massages. I had to get extra acupuncture. I had to take naps. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was listening to that and choosing that for me because that for me is an act of self-love and really the more i do that right i'm clearing the places where i have these wounds where there's trauma and as i do that more of my soul's light more of the aspects of my being and through the years there have been you know many different aspects of me and you would understand this um, you know, the one who's been the medicine woman, mm -hmm. the one who's been the priestess, mm -hmm. right? The one who's been the seer, um, the one who does sacred ceremony, all those things that have played an important role. And I feel embodiment is what we're, for me, it was the word for this year because mm -hmm. I was being called to really step into my spiritual leadership in a different way, mm -hmm. to really be seen, to, to bring the, the doorway, the opening, the sacred space for those who resonate with my work, right, to other people around the world. And, you know, to be the, the way shower. But again, you know, we're all helping each other because it's, it's one of the things I've really come to, to realize is it's not a journey of aloneness, which is what part of me felt like for a long time. We are to do this in community the way we did it in ancient times. We had tribes, we had communities. We're meant to help each other through, through this uh, process. And the ascension that we're all going through is these different levels of awareness and remembrance and it happens at the time you know when you're ready and your soul knows what those moments are mm -hmm. which is why i like to help um, focus people on really reconnecting with the higher aspects so that they can receive that guidance and so the more you you melt those layers away the more of you of your your light your gifts right all the things that you need to continue moving forward they start to come in more deeply and you may know that you know you're a healer but then all of a sudden your gifts start to expand in a different direction that was dormant within you, but now you've hit the vibration where those seeds can come online. I like to think mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you are filling more of this physical vessel with more of your light. And, and so less of your ego, right, 
is starts to be less in control and your soul becomes your higher self becomes more the one guiding the way. Thank you for elaborating on that. And I think it's really important. There, there were some key, I have notes all over my paper, but I know we, we only have so much time to, to capture everything from you. It's like this infinite conversation. We'll definitely have to have another sequel at some point. Absolutely. But, um, but, you know, one of the things that you, in your discussion, and I like how you were describing this aspect of the peeling of the layers away, you know, it's kind of like the onion so that more light can come in. And then also this aspect of self-care. How um, yes. this is because a lot of folks on the planet right now, you know, we have folks walking into the center all the time. They're having all types of emotions. They're having physical out picturings and they may be at a point in their journey right now where they don't quite understand why this is, you know, with the energy that's coming on the planet, or there are things that are coming to the surface that they thought they they had dealt with. I mean, I've, I've experienced it myself, you know, I had a major situation a couple of weeks ago where things popped up where I thought, oh, wow, I thought I had dealt with this. But it's it's also looking at it, I guess, as an opportunity, right? It's presenting itself. You talked about that whole idea of choice, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And you know, for many of us, if we had made certain choices at a given juncture, it would have put us on a different, you know, trajectory. There's no judgment in that, right? But, but, you know, there's there's obviously some aspect to this at the timing that you spoke about and where we are right now, the, the confirmation cannot be um, looked at any, any other way than it's just confirmation. Absolutely, know? we are at a turning point for mm -hmm. humanity. And uh, like I said, you know, we all get to choose, but it, it happens through, you know, our heart center. And so I always tell people, um, keep working on, you know, loving yourself, being more love, allowing that love to heal you, bring love to the parts of you that are scared. And we go, you know, people call it the shadow, you know, the dark places. We're going deeper so we can go higher mm -hmm. because we are such powerful beings, but yet we forgot we are source. We came from source. It is source returning to source. Gabby, I know you, I saw you writing down quite a bit, so I'm I'm gonna hold my questions right now and then <laughs> not be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started touching on this a little bit already, but um, I would just love to hear more. Uh, you mentioned how. Um, some of our greatest gifts are the things that we most needed, you know, to heal. And I was would love to know how do you guide individuals or if you have any words of advice for people who struggle with societal pressures and expectations while trying to discover their their true deeper selves. And, you know, when those the fears come up, fears of being rejected or annihilated or controlled any of those things how can what word of advice would you have for people I, I would say a couple things one is definitely you know have somebody on speed dial that um, you know you can call and would never judge you and will just hold space for you sometimes we just you know I have people that I can do that with um, because like I said, we're not meant to do this alone. And I tried to do it alone for a long time and ended up getting a lot of physical symptoms and felt very alienated. So that's one thing to do the, and, you know, finding a community like, you know, the center, it's perfect for uh, 
being with like-minded people that can understand what you're going through, who can share things of what they've been through, you know, getting the, the tools that, you know, work for you. Like I know for me, music, I've always loved music and music is one of the ways I meditate um, a lot. And I've been meditating for many years. So that is one of my go-to practices. I love to walk in nature. Like I can sit outside and immediately when I'm hearing the sounds of the birds and, and feeling the energy of the branches of the trees and the leaves moving, it brings me back to center. I know music does that for me as well. So one of the ways to kind of get out of, if you're having a moment where your ego is trying to spiral you into something it's remembering like oh if i do this now it'll help give me some space so i can process what's happening because we we don't want to suppress what's happening um, you may be if you're at work you may have to go to the bathroom right and go into the stall and take some deep breaths so one of the things that i was reminded of recently was the the sympathetic and the parasympathetic and the the parasympathetic um you know can cause you to uh which i think is the the dorsal vagus can cause you to shut down if you're going through like an experience and the I'm trying to remember if it was the ventral vagus i think that's what it's called but anyway it's the it's the breath right like taking a moment to take a deep breath because that then opens the space for peace and love to come into your central nervous system and so that's why in yoga right in meditation a lot of these practices use breath work because breath work is a doorway and i know my guides um, they had created this mantra that i had uh, spoken in, in a transmission which was with one breath i come to rest i rest in the source within me and it is so true it is a doorway for us to enter a different space because with that breath you come into presence right with the ego is either in the past or in the future. It's either thinking about something that happened to it or, or worried about what could happen to it in the future. But then the breath brings you back into the present moment. So anything that you can do to bring you back into the present moment helps you get out of the spiral for the meantime, right? Because you still have to process what's happening. And I, you know, like to teach that, you know, we honor those aspects of our being. We take the moment when we have the moment, because if you're at work, you may not be able to do that, but you can take some deep breaths and kind of come back to center for a while. To, to honor that part of the ego that's, you know, in fear. And I like to, you know, speak to it. I do a lot of journaling. That's one of my practices let it say whatever it wants to say. Um, I do sacred ritual, well, I'll have that part of me, you know, I'll write it on a piece of paper and then I'll burn it. So finding, you know, little things that work for you to help take you out of that, you know, spiral. And then, you know, the other part is sometimes we just, we need to get help from somebody else, which that's why I love, you know, the center because you have all these different modalities and opportunities and gatherings uh, for people to find, right, what their pathway is, because we're all different and we all react differently to things. So I like to tell people like, you know, just because I meditate doesn't mean that, you know, you should, but find the way that helps you get to that place of communion that place of divine devotion that works for you and then do that consistently because it's it's the it's like we're building our spiritual muscle 
and the consistency is important, especially like in times like now where it's so intense, you really have to have a foundation that you can go back to so that, you know, all this astrology that's happening is to help us, but it's also very intense. And when you have some foundational practices that you can lean on and people you can lean on and, you know, outside help that you can lean on, it makes the journey a lot easier. And I, and I learned that the hard way. Thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful tools and, and reminders, even just the breath. I took a deep breath when you said that and I felt my nervous system just relax so yeah. much. It's very powerful. Malvina, do you want to take over the next question? Yeah, I, I was I started chatting and I forgot that I had put my mute phone on there because I didn't want anything to interrupt all that beautiful, powerful lovely love and joy and just I'm sitting here getting all teared up I just have to tell you this um this is just so beautiful and I'm also thinking about just the timing of us you know you and I are we're always connected all the time we we might not talk for a long period of time but now we're here right now right, right? <laughs> it's just it's so beautiful but you know, you, you said so many very powerful things in, in our conversation this evening that I think people can just reflect on and take it within themselves and help support them, you know, on their journey right now through this powerful time, you know, when we're at this turning point. And um, you know, you you shared so much and thank you for really i was hoping that you went back <laughs> we we, did, we didn't want to we didn't want to but but to for folks to hear all that i think it's really important because oftentimes what happens when people meet you at a given point in time where you have all this awareness and you, your gifts are 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 so much to the surface and you have all this you're expressing the love that you already are, right? So intensely, folks, number one, don't have an awareness of the journey that's associated with it. And the fact that these individual journeys are specific to eat, you know, themselves and and the the realness and the authenticity of what happens in those journeys, right? Everything's not coming up roses. That's I mean, right. you were not tiptoeing through the tulips by any stretch of imagination <laughs> here, right? And yeah. and and that's that's happens with so many people. And I think for people to hear that journey and understand, you know, the things that you experienced is it's like so valuable. So now we're here at this time, you know, this ascension time and 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 you are you even expressed well this is where i am now this is the name that they've given me right now it's not like ta-da i've arrived right yeah this is this is what it is right now you know in a couple months it could be something different <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> right but yes. but this is how the that this is how the layers of the onion peel away 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 um so, you know, Gabby asked that magnificent question about, you know, the different things that you could, you would recommend to support people along the way. And I, and I guess I just want to open it up to allow you also to express whatever else you're feeling or, you know. Yeah, my, my guides are reminding coming, me. Of, coming yeah. in, <laughs> you know, that you would like to share you know, some parting wisdom and enlightenment with us. You know, we certainly would be willing to. And if you're OK, I'd them. like to share two things because okay. they're showing me uh, a vision of 
it was a, a turning point for me to be able to think of, of uh, soul and ego in this way. So the analogy is you're in a theater and on the stage are all the egos playing their role in your life, but your soul is all the way at the top of the theater. And so when you can realize and recognize that each of our souls are co-creating every experience that you have, and that the people on the stage, the ego personalities are just playing their role, even when, you know, it ain't so nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That it makes it easier to accept because a lot of the journey is about acceptance, surrendering, allowing, receiving. We've been so conditioned to shut down our hearts, to close ourselves off, to be afraid to be vulnerable, but yet it is in opening the heart and being vulnerable that more of our light and love can help us to be more embodied because it helps to heal us. And when I was given that vision and saw myself I was able to see <clears throat> my family members in a different way and people who had been triggering me for years in a different way. It really took away some of the, um, the emotion tied to those triggers. And I was like, wow, yes, you know what? My mom loves me so much, right? That she's playing her role perfectly because I felt very controlled by my mom growing up. Mm -hmm. And she's a lovely, you know, soul, and we have a different relationship now. She still doesn't quite understand everything I do, but now because I understand that, you know, it's kind of like we're in this, we're in this movie where we're like the main characters and everyone's playing their role and they're playing their role to help you because we mirror to each other, right? the places within where we need to bring healing and transformation so that more light, because we're here to walk on this earth as these pillars of light, as the love beings that we are. So when I was given and shown that, that really changed the trajectory for me. It really allowed me to have more compassion and forgiveness for myself and for those who would hurt me. So I wanted to share that with those listening for you to kind of sit with that and kind of look at the people because you're probably most triggered by people in your family, people you work with. There's no coincidence, right? That is all orchestrated. Your soul helped orchestrate that because your soul loves you so much. You are so loved and you can't even imagine how loved you are. It's difficult for the human mind to really understand that. For me, it's feeling it. And many times when I'm channeling and I feel that unconditional love, I get so emotional. You can't put it into words, but when you feel it, you go, oh my God, this, this, is, this is what we really are. We are this consciousness that is love. And that really changed the tra trajectory for me of really being able to view my world and the people around me from a different perspective and really see it from the perspective of my soul. And so, um, I think lastly, I would say, you know, love is all, it's the alchemy. You know, the more you can practice loving yourself, because that's where it starts, it's the self-love. That then opens the doorway for love to be experienced in other parts of your life. It, you know, any energy brings like energy to it. So the more you can practice loving yourself, 
the more you're going to start to feel it around you because it's contagious. You know, our light and our love, when people feel that, you know, everybody wants to be loved. And, you know, if you were to ask, I know when I've asked my ego, it wants to be loved, right? It wants to be heard. It wants to be held. It wants to be listened to. And love does all of that. And so I would say to all of you listening to this, to think about, you know, where can you bring more love? Where can you be choosing yourself from a place of love in making choices where you're putting love first for you? Many of us have been, you know, made to think that that was selfish, but it's not. Because unless you can love yourself in, the way, in that way, it opens the doorway for then you to more deeply understand and embody the love that source has for you. And you are source, you're returning to that level of remembrance and consciousness. That's what ascension is about. And love will always guide you to that place. It is the center of our truth. Love is always going to show you, help you feel, um, help you sense what the truth is for you. And your truth is not going to be the same as your neighbor's truth, as your family member's truth, because we all have a unique journey that we're here to bring forward because we have specific lessons and gifts that we're meant to bring forward. But yet, I think the common element for us all is love. It is the, it is the energy, the consciousness that, that unifies us into you know, what people call oneness and unity consciousness. It is the thread that connects us all. I feel that love emanating and filling this space the whole time you were speaking. Mm, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess, uh, you know, we just want folks to know where they can connect with you. Um, you know, we'll make sure that we also put all of your information in our, in our notes, our show notes and things, but where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? You know, if they, want to do work with you or if you're going to be doing certain retreats you know about your books that they can have access to um yeah. yes so then, the best best place is my website which is anumanispeaks.com on the website right on the home page you know people can set up i have two different types of free consultation so if somebody's interested in doing, you know, sound alchemy, quantum healing sessions, where we're focusing on what I was talking about, melting away those layers so that you can embody more of who you are, you can go to my services tab and you'll be able to see what those services are. Um, any retreats I do, um, also on the homepage and then on the navigation, there's a tab for retreats. My next one is in Costa Rica, April 20th, 27th of 2024. It's going to be a seven day co facilitating with my soul sister, Pamela Jane Gerond. And I have, um, I'm, I just booked today a, um, another uh, workshop where I'm going to be doing sound alchemy, and it's going to be July 22nd in Annapolis. Maryland, and I'll be channeling Mary Magdalene and Isis and other other beings. And I'm hoping to, you know, do a little bit of a tour with this elevating your consciousness through sound alchemy. So I want to do stuff in Delaware and, and PA, New Jersey. So as I book all those, I'll be putting them on my website. So that's the best place. And there's also links to purchase my book, which is on Amazon, Unmasking Your Soul. A Transformational Journey of Truth, Light, and Healing. 
Um, my artwork isn't up on my site yet. I'm, I've mainly been taking it to events, but I'm, uh, I have it on my to-do list to get some help to create a page where people can purchase my art. And actually the, the around my screen here is a canvas that I created. It has um, Archangel Michael uh, essences to it. So I actually have, you know, three different mediums of art now, my pastel paintings. I have um, canvases that I do now as well as these prisma marker um, paintings that are very psychedelic. I've been working on a rainbow series. So all of that um, is going to be available on my website and my Oracle deck, which is called with wisdom of the soul Oracle. Also, there's a, a link on the navigation where you can purchase that. So I have multiple pieces of your beautiful artwork still living here in this space. <laughs> beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So Gabby, did you have any additional words? I know we're both just floating right now, <laughs> floating in this energy. We didn't know if something channeled might start coming down, but I think it came down in its way through your whole story and your speaking, because I feel like I had a, a healing and treatment mm -hmm. right now. Um, mm -hmm. Just feeling so much joy. And I'm so, so very thankful to have been able to spend this time with you this evening. This is, this is such a gift, such oh, a gift. Oh, thank you. It's, it's such an honor. And, uh, you know, it's always, for me, so beautiful to witness each other's journeys, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you and I have been witnessing each other's journeys. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful. I am so humbled to be here at this time and to be able to serve in the way that I do. And I'm really, I could say for the first time, really just enjoying, you know, what's coming through me. And that's a sign for me that I know that, wow, I've gotten to the, you know, a major turning point in my life and so grateful for that. Well, we're grateful for you. Oh, thank you. And I, and I am grateful for, for you both and your community. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. I don't know how an hour passed, honestly. I checked the time and had to double check because it felt like we we're in a spiral or a vortex or something. I think we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll be sure to share all the information about where to find you down in the show notes. And we can't wait to have you for a second series in the future. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at State of Consciousness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed spending time with us and look forward to the next time. Until then, if you'd like to stay connected, you can feel free to reach out to us via our website at www.innersourcewellnesscenter.com. There you will find links to our podcasts, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel, as well as our mailing list. Stay connected. Stay positive. Namaste.